All right, everybody. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and get rolling. Um, thanks for joining us uh, for this latest webinar. I know we took a little bit of time off, but we wanted to come back and show you guys how the new features we added last month uh, look from the end user uh, or athlete client perspective. Uh, I'm uh, Ryan Carroll. I'll be joined today by Lauren Johnson from Bridge. And um, Lauren, is there any announcements, anything you want to say before we get started? Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Um, two quick announcements. First, um, I put this in the email invite. If you missed our previous webinar, we covered um, the new features on the web. So we linked to that in the email, um, and it can also be found through our blog. If you go and look for our webinars, we post each webinar to our blog, we give a quick rundown of what we talked about and include the video recording. Um, and then last, in terms of today's webinar, if any questions do come up as Ryan is walking us through these new features, feel free to send in a question. Um, I can get it answered through the chat or we will have time at the end to answer all of the questions as well. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen. So let me do that. Oh, uh, let's see here. All right, I'm just going to move this over. Okay, so um, the first thing that we wanted to cover was um, you know some of the end user features on the uh, on the tablet. So the biggest one, or the first one we're going to start with, is if you'll notice now down at the very bottom of this home page. Um, so when I open this up, keep in mind this is going to be from your uh, your point of view on this. So this is what you're seeing. Your end user or athletes will not be able to see the same things um, as you. Um, you're going to have access to more of the data. So you know, up here I have all of my teams up at the top. I have my forms uh, down there towards the bottom. And at the very bottom, I have different tabs that I can hit to go into different areas of the app. Um, so we're gonna focus this uh, uh, today on the messaging piece. So if I click down there at the bottom right, you'll see messages. So what we've done is we've now added, you'll recognize this from the website where you can receive communication from your athletes, from your clients in real time. You can send communication to and from your athletes in real time. So, you know, this is in that top or that kind of right side of the page of the team side where you have your athletes room, which if you remember is communication from your athletes to you. And then the coaches room, which is gonna be the communication amongst you. And if there's others on your team, um, you guys communicate in the coach's room. So it's very easy. I can come in here. I can see, uh, you know, for instance, up near the top there, Ozzy Guillen sent me some messaging um, on how easy an exercise was or a video. If I want to send something out to them, you'll see that there's a plus up there in the top right corner. So if I hit that plus, I'll get this nice drop down where I can send out messaging to my entire team or to where I can pick a specific individual and send them messaging. So if I say I'm going to send something out to my entire team and you'll notice I can enter a comment there that will be sent out immediately. I can also click that plus symbol to the right. What that does is that's going to pull up this little menu that will allow me to either send out a video or a picture. So you know if I click one of those icons it's going to pull up the video on my tablet. So a very easy way for you to send videos, send pictures, send comments to your athletes straight from the tablet. Um, before I move forward, um, I think that was really the big thing from the tablet. Lauren, was there anything else that uh, we needed to make sure we covered from this side? Oh, the, the building, wasn't it? Um, yep. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, my uh, my notes have gone missing. So, um, <laughs> so what I can do here is we wanted to show you how to build within the library and build the new features that we talked about. So if I go one 
one click over from the messages at the bottom, I go to the library. You'll see here where you can access all of your content, all of your programming. You can change programming on the fly. You can edit it. You can send out new programming, all that kind of stuff. Um, before we jump in, something I will show you is, uh, you know, so we're clicked onto the programs tab. Uh, if I want to create an exercise, you know, this is one of the easiest ways to do that. So if I click into the exercises tab, um, you know, I can click the plus symbol and I can add a new exercise from here. So a lot of times that saves uh, people from having to add it as a file and upload it and take all these steps. You can almost just, just direct upload from the tablet. So I wanted to highlight that while we're here. Um, the other thing, now that I'm back on programs, so let's say that I wanna build a program. All right, so I'm just gonna click that plus symbol again. I'm gonna to go to new program and it's gonna have the same feel as the website. So if I say Ryan's program, save that. And now it's gonna take us to where we're gonna add our first phase. So I can add a new phase, a templated phase or the training engine. I'm gonna go with the new phase because we want to focus on the new training blocks or the new time blocks. So phase one. All right, so if I click into that phase one, now I'm into day one. So it's gonna be a very similar flow to building from the website. So I'm gonna click, I want a new block. And now this is the view that's gonna pop up. I can either program what we're gonna call a regular block, or we have our time-based block. So if you did not watch the last webinar we did, um, you know, we've recently added these time-based blocks, AMRAPs, EMOMs, rounds for time. Um, so now when you come in, um, you know, let's call this Ryan's uh, AMRAP. And then I'm just gonna click on that I want it to be an AMRAP as many rounds as possible. And we're gonna set the clock at 10 minutes. So I'm gonna hit save. And now it's built out that block. You'll notice that I have the little A next to it, which symbolizes that this block is an AMRAP. And then I'm gonna click into the exercise and I'm going to pick out my exercises. So something else that we had um, discussed last time was how you can compartmentalize where your exercises are coming from. So if I hit all exercises, I now have the option to pull from everything in the system or if I just wanna pull from the Exos library, I can do that. Or if I just wanna pull from my own specific library, I could do that as well. So I'm gonna limit it just to Exos exercises. So maybe for this AMRAP, you know, I wanna do a, um, I don't know, a bench press. So I'm gonna search that. I'm gonna pick that bench press barbell. So we've got our push. Now I can delineate what I wanna track within that. So, you know, I want to do a certain number of reps. I'm going to have it on absolute for the weight prescription because I'm just going to insert the weight that I want that athlete to do during that AMRAP. Uh, hit set prescriptions. Okay, that all looks good. So now I can say I want them to do five reps at, let's say, 135 pounds. Okay, so now that that's set, I'll hit the little X in the top right. Now I'm gonna add my second exercise. So we had an upper body push, so let's do an upper body pull. So maybe that's a TRX row. And you'll see, even though I didn't get it completely right there with the text row, it, um, it found the exercise I was looking for. So I want the TRX row. We're not gonna do it for time. We're actually gonna do it for reps. And maybe we wanna do that for 10 reps. Exit out. And so now I've got my 10 minute AMRAP that I've programmed that is gonna be a barbell bench press with a TRX row, okay? Now, the other things that I can do, I can hit that um, plus sign and I can add more things to this. Um, if I hit those three dots, I've got some other options there at the top. Um, but what I'll do next is I'll hit add a new block and now I'm gonna add an imam block so ryan's every minute on the minute and you have different options which you'll see with the drop down 
So I can have somebody do something every minute on the minute, every two minutes on the minute, every three, all the way up to every 10 minutes on the minute, okay? So for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna leave it every minute on the minute, and we're gonna do 10 rounds, and I hit save. Every minute on the minute, hit save. And now you'll see, again, there's an A for the MRAP, there's an E denotating the EMOM. All right, so now I can come back into here, all exercises, I want to pick from the Exos library. Maybe this is a, um, I don't know, a clean. Let's do a barbell clean. And we're going to do reps and weight, absolute again, set the timer or set the constraints here. We're going to do five reps at, again, 135 pounds. And I want to pair that with, um, you know, I don't know, maybe a leg curl, a standing leg curl. So we're just going to do that for reps and we're going to do five each leg. So now we've got our EMOM built. Okay. Last option. I'll hit the block, new block. I'm sure you guys know where this is going, but this one's going to be Ryan's rounds for time. Okay. So we want to do the next set of exercises for, let's call it 10 rounds, and we're going to get a time for that. So I enter that in. Maybe let's do squat. I'm going to set the exercise library to Exos. Squat. Uh, maybe I want to do it with a dumbbell. Okay. So we're going to do reps, weight. I'm going to change this from percentage difficulty to absolute because I want to assign the weight they're going to do. So this is five reps at um say 40 pounds and then on top of that let's just look up jump rope and they're going to do reps there for let's see 50 reps now this is if i wanted to add some rest at the end of that um but what i will actually do if i hit parameters is i will go back yeah i don't need time there so, um, all right, so now we've got our three different blocks. So this is how you would program that in. Okay, so we've got our AMRAP block, our EMOM, and our rounds for time. You'll see those are um, notated with the A, the E, and the R. That's how you know, that's how your athletes will know that that's what those blocks are and that's what those blocks mean. Uh, Lauren, anything you wanna add there? Um, no, I think this was great. Um, just highlighting that this can be done both here on the tablet and on the web. So if you need to be building while you're on the go, this is a great option. The other thing that I didn't highlight is actually if I click on the name, so you'll see there, um, let's call it, let's say this block, Ryan's AMRAP. If I click right there with my finger, it's going to pull up this extra menu. So this is where you remember we talked about last time creating templates, creating benchmarks so that you can come back and you can test these and your athletes can see maybe where they finish relative to others. If I go in, I can save this AMRAP as a template or and or I could link it to this benchmark. So, you know, let's just call it webinar AMRAP and save it up there as a new benchmark. save and now I've got that linked so when I come back out see what happened there save as a benchmark link it all right so now you'll see there's that star next to it which will tell you and will tell the athlete that this is a benchmark AMRAP. So they can go on a leaderboard, see how they did, 
They can also come back and compare this to a future version of this to see if they get more rounds done next time. <clears throat> so if you don't have this benchmarked, it's just kind of a one moment in time block. But if you make it a benchmark, then you can assign this again and it will compare next time to the previous time and all the other previous times. Uh, anything you want to add there, Lauren, before I switch over to the next part, which is the phone? Yeah. Um, so another way to think of the benchmark is it's similar to how we have required sets, um, but now we're able to track on the block level instead of on the individual exercise level. So as Ryan mentioned, um, you can pull this up in the leaderboard um, and it will also flow into the activity report for you to easily review the results of these benchmarks. Um, I think I had another thing to add in here, but I can't quite remember. So if it comes up, I will add it. I'll let you know. Why don't we, um, let's pause here for a second, Lauren, and see if you have any questions on this before we switch out and go to the phone, just because oh. it'll be easier to do it that way rather than go back and forth. So if anyone has questions about what we just described on the tablet, go ahead and throw them in. Yeah, great. So we'll pause here so you guys have some time to type it out. And I remembered what I was going to say, so perfect timing. Um, as we saw here, when Ryan was adding a benchmark to this AMRAP, you could see that he had another previous benchmark that he created that he could have assigned to this AMRAP. Um, the benchmarks have to go, can only be created and assigned um, for the specific block type. For example, the, uh, the benchmark Ryan just created for AMRAP couldn't be used for the EMOM block. So they're all separate benchmarks. Yep, so there's no benchmark that I've created yet in EMOMs, as you can see. Yeah. So you would just need to create a new one to track that block. Um, so no questions have come in here yet. So um, I think we should be good to move over to the phone. Um, so Ryan will show us what this will look like on the athlete side when they're logging in on the mobile app to go and complete this training that you've built out. And if any questions do come up around um, what we just covered on the iPad, feel free to still send them in and we'll get them answered for you. All right, so um, so this is, again, like Lauren said, this is from the end user perspective, the athlete, they're gonna log in to their training. So as you guys will remember, this is the homepage for the app right now. I open it up. Um, in this case, this is from a, a strength coach account. So there's multiple programs assigned. If you're on a private trainer or personal trainer account, um, you'll have to assign different program multiple programs through having multiple teams um, so just wanted to explain that up front but if i click into barry's program give it a second here to load all right so um, you know now i come into this is that playlist view that playlist functionality i haven't logged anything on phase one yet I could choose workout one, two, or three. I could do them in any order. I'm gonna choose for our purposes, workout one. So I click into here. I can preview <clears throat> everything that I'm gonna do. So as you can see, we've got an AMRAP block, we've got an EMOM block, and we've got a rounds for time block. If I hit start, now I'm gonna move into that training program. Again, I'm not sure why this is taking a second to switch over. Here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and log my performance data. Hit submit, and it'll push me through. So I've created a, um, a templated warmup. So, you know, I go through this, enter all of my data, hit the check mark, and now I'll be taken into the AMRAP. So if we look up at the top, we can see, you know, the AMRAP is called super strong. A for AMRAP, it's starred to denote that this is a benchmark AMRAP. 
um, you know, whether I know that or not, uh, you know, it's there. So we have that this is an AMRAP max round completed in 10 minutes. You'll also notice the little I. So your, your athletes can click on that I to get an understanding of what does an AMRAP mean. You know, I'm sure everyone here knows what that means, but your athletes may not. So here they can look and see that. They can see what the prescription is. So 135 pound clean for five reps and then a counter movement squat jump for five reps. Okay, down there at the bottom, you'll see where we are going to check off how many rounds we complete. So that's for full rounds. The other block is for reps that are included, reps that happen that aren't part of a completed round. Okay, and so there's another I there that they can click to review what that means. So in the example, if you run out of time in the middle of round three and you completed five reps, you would enter two rounds completed with five reps completed. So next would be, I go down to the bottom, I click my clock, uh, the clock icon there, and you'll see that it's preloaded to that 10 minutes for the AMRAP. So I hit the plus, three, two, one, uh, I'm hooked up to the computer, but you would normally hear an audible ding when that start is, and this clock will just continue to count down the 10 minutes and it will ding at the end. Um, and so when I'm done, I go back into here and say maybe I completed four rounds and I completed five rounds of my fifth, okay? So got that completed hit the check mark to notate that I'm done. It'll log it there and off I move. So now I'm moving into my Imam block. So my Get Strong Imam. So up there at the top, we've got Imam, 10 rounds, one minute each. That would be different if we had selected, you know, uh, two Imam or three or four up to 10. I click the I, it gives me an explanation as the athlete. What is an Imam? What does that mean? What do I do? And now I've got my exercises. So the one thing I wanted to point out that I was not, or I kind of glossed over on the last one, is I can still click into these exercises and I can see my history of every time I've done walking lunges. I can see comments that I maybe I've made to my coach. I could click the plus sign and I could still take pictures. So I still have all of the functionality that I have of the old block um, within this EMOM, okay? So now what I'll do is if I go down to the clock, you'll see that it's again starting at 10 and I hit start and that's going to start ticking down. Now what will happen, again, you can't hear because it's plugged into the computer, but at the end of one minute, it will ding again. At the end of the second minute, it'll ding again. Okay, so it will let them know when their minute is up and they need to start again, okay? So what I'll do is as I work through this, you know, I can check off, um, you know, as I completed that I completed all of these or maybe I only completed eight rounds before I couldn't keep going, but I'm gonna knock all them off to complete the block. Then it's gonna move me into my last block, which is the rounds for time. So rounds for time, we're gonna do eight, I click on the I to get information. It's gonna to explain to me again, what are rounds for time? So I'm doing these two exercises for as many rounds as I can do uh, as fast as I can. So I've got squats and push-ups. Um, so you'll notice that where we would normally fill in the data is a timed block. I can hit info there and it will guide me to put in the time it took me to complete eight rounds of 10 squats and 10 push-ups. Lastly, when I go down to my clock, you'll notice that the clock for this one actually starts at zero and it will tick up. Okay, so a little different clock functionality. So I hit start and now it's gonna start clicking up. So now I get to work, I do my 10 squats, my 10 push-ups, you know, I, I stop it here and then I enter that time in. So the MM is for minutes, the SS is for seconds, the MS is for milliseconds. So I can put in that maybe it took me, 
I don't know, five minutes and seven seconds to complete. Hit the check mark. That completes my workout. And I can come in here, log my training, just as you would on previous workouts. Say so this took me 45 minutes, hit submit. And I have access to my data to record my RPE. So this is the first workout. So I don't have anything yet to compare it to. And then I can click back into the workout to look at the loads and how those compare to other training that I've logged recently. So the neat thing about the, the time-based blocks is that you as the coach or practitioner are now able to capture the data coming from those prescriptions. So no longer do you need to have them write that in the notes to where it's not tracked and you can't get to it and access it easily. Um, that's one of the nice things about this piece. Um, I'll pause there. Lauren, is there anything you wanted to highlight or point out from the phone? Um, I think that one other thing we should go over on the phone is the um, COVID questionnaire. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, if you guys will notice here on the main page, down towards the bottom right, there's that plus symbol. So if I hit that, um, I now have the option to, uh, well, I've had the option to log activity. So if I wanted to log outside training, you know, maybe a team practice or a yoga session, I can log that here. But if I click on submit form, you've now got access to all of these forms that the athlete can fill out from their side. One of them which you'll notice the third one down is the COVID form. So we've recently added that where they can come in and fill out uh, this questionnaire and submit that. So, you know, uh, thankfully right now I'm feeling fairly healthy, but, um, you know, I could check off a couple of these. I could explain why um, and then hit done, submit. And now I've logged that for my coach or my trainer to review um, and report or, or connect with me about. Uh, Lauren, anything else you wanted to, to highlight there? Um, I think that that covered it. Yeah, so all athletes have access to this on their phone. It's a mobile form for everybody. So it's a quick and easy way to um, check in with your athletes on how they're doing, their health before bringing them into a, the gym, um, just to make sure everybody's staying safe and healthy. Um, but I think that that covers it for the questionnaire. Um, if anybody has any questions around anything that we've covered today, um, please feel free to write it in. We can't unmute you, so there should be a question box that you can type out your question, and Ryan and I will see it, and we can get that answered for you. Um, we finished a little bit earlier than we um, thought just so we could have some time for questions. So if no questions do come up, we can let everybody go, but please feel free. Oh, we have one. Great. Is it possible that I can only see programs or athletes programs at a time? Um, are you thinking only one program at a time? Oh, perfect, yep. So on the tablet, yeah, you can only see one athlete's program at a time um, when you're going through the workout. You can have multiple started, but only one will appear on the screen at a time. So you can just toggle back and forth if you have multiple athletes training with you so they can enter in their data. But on a personal trainer and remote for schools, the split screen functionality is not available. That is just a strength coach package feature. Um, great question though. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, I'll give it another second for anyone to type in questions they have, but in the meantime, just wanted to remind everyone we did record this session, so we will be sending out 
an email with this recording so you can access it, refer back to it whenever you would like. So keep an eye out for that email coming shortly. Um, we will be linking it to our blog where we'll give a quick rundown and I'll link back to the webinar we did prior to this where we covered these features on the web as well, just in case you missed it and you can always refer back to that. And we do also put our webinars up on YouTube. So if there's any webinars you missed in the past, feel free to go and check them out. And Ryan and I are always looking for new topics to cover that would be helpful for you guys. So always feel free to send us messages. You can send them into support with requests or reply to our email with the webinar information. Okay, cool. So no other questions have come in. So Ryan, is there anything else you wanted to go over? No, I think that's it. Thanks guys for joining. And like Lauren said, please send us if you have ideas for things you'd like to see us cover. We we appreciate the feedback to to keep uh keep doing these for you guys. Yeah, totally. Okay, great. Well, thank thank you everyone for joining. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. All right. Bye, guys.